Hey everybody, the Johnny Cage here, I'm back with another movie review. So I just got back from seeing Lincoln, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, a fantastic actor. Right now on IMDb, it's got a score of 8.3 out of 10, and the synopsis goes a little like this. As the Civil War continues to rage, America's president struggles with continuing carnage on the battlefield as he fights with many inside his own cabinet on the decision to emancipate the slaves. And that's what this movie is all about. Um, if you're going to this movie thinking that this movie is going to have a lot of war in it, um, a lot of fighting, then you are very wrong. There is maybe uh, a minute or so of that at the very beginning of the movie, and that is the most you'll ever see of it. This is all about whether to have the 13th Amendment amended, and thus slaves set free. Um, and it's just a lot back and forth about that. I think that history buffs... Um, you know, history teachers, like our, our friend NES Complex, um, would probably get a real kick out of this, especially depending on how much you know about the Civil War. Me, myself, I know little more than what I've studied from it in the few history classes I've had throughout my academic career. So I've never taken just a class on the Civil War. Thus, you know, my knowledge is a little blurry, I and mean, it's been, what, probably... Uh, five years since I took a history class. I took one in college, actually, not that I needed it. But, um, very, very good movie. I, let's run down to the actors. Ob it's Obviously, we have Daniel Day-Lewis playing Abraham Lincoln, directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, you know, Spielberg has always been a real inspiration to a lot of up-and-coming directors. A lot of people will say that his work has slipped, um, you know, over the past maybe decade or two even, um, and maybe that's true. Um, maybe there just aren't as many original ideas left anymore, and I don't know. I thought it was fine in this. There wasn't anything that, that caught me as, oh, that's, you know, that, that stands out weird. For me personally, I look at films almost from more of an editing standpoint because, you know, me being a person that normally does, you know, let's play videos and such and actually has done some work with editing before, that's something that I pay a lot more attention to rather than where the camera may be positioned for whatever shot. But uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, amazing actor. If you don't know who he is, that's understandable. He's very picky about his roles. Um, you'll probably know him best from Gangs of New York or There Will Be Blood, in which he pretty much plays the same exact person. Uh, you know, that butcher with like the handlebar mustache kind of guy. Really sinister characters in both of those films. Um, he was also in The Last of the Mohicans, which is a much older movie, so you may not have seen that. But um, when he gets into a character, he gets into it. It's been, uh, it's been mentioned by him in numerous interviews, and he really does a great job with Abraham Lincoln here, although uh, there is a lot of um, questions, a lot of forums, I guess, going uh, on, on what he did with his voice, because uh, when you think of Abraham Lincoln, you think of a deeper, kind of booming voice, um, at least I do, and maybe that's only because the only other film I can really think of, you know, with Abraham Lincoln is probably like, you know, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, to be honest. But, um, well, I did see Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and we'll get to that in a second, maybe. Um, no, not that we need to. But, uh, yeah, he did a great job. He it was very soft-spoken, higher-pitched kind of a voice. It didn't take me out of the character at all, but it was still an interesting choice on his ha behalf, and maybe it was, I don't know, maybe Spielberg wanted it done that way. Who knows? Uh, maybe that's how he really talked. Beats me. Um, you have Sally Field as uh, Mrs. Lincoln. Sally Field is just, she's an amazing actress. Um, she's done it all. Most recently, she was uh, Aunt May in the Amazing Spider-Man movie, the reboot of Spider-Man. Um, she was, like, she's something like 20 years older than um, Mrs. Lincoln actually was at the time, but she demanded, I guess, from Spielberg that she get this role, and she does an amazing job with it, because, well, I said, this is mostly about slaves being emancipated. Um, there is an underlying story of how they had lost their first son, Willie, uh, when he was really young. I forgot what he died of, some, some disease of some sort. And then their other son, who's played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, he wants to go into the war, he wants to fight, and obviously he, neither of his parents want him to. And, you know, she would, Mrs. Lincoln would just be so uh, beside herself. You know, she would have to be, as she says, she would have to be thrown into, into a loony bin if, uh, if her other son had died, you know, especially during this war with her husband being the president and all. Um, one thing that they don't, you know, speaking of these actors that I'm naming off, they really haven't pushed the card as far as how many great actors they have in this film. And uh, it, it makes sense to the point that a lot of the actors have small roles, but they're there. 
and they do a really good job with what they're given. Uh, for instance, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's quickly becoming one of my favorite actors of, of nowadays. Uh, James Spader, who you may know from Boston Legal, who was also in a bunch of movies from the 80s. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Um, I didn't really know what his, his well, he was a he was a congress, congressman of some sort. A lot of this takes place literally inside of the House of Representatives, the the bickering, the quarreling of whether or not to have the slaves emancipated. Um, pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, Jackie Earl Haley, who is just a very strange choice for a movie of this magnitude. We're talking about the guy that played Rorschach and Freddy Krueger in the reboot of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. He plays uh, Alexander Stevens, the vice president of the Confederacy. Uh, who else do we got here? Jared Harris, who plays uh, Price on Mad Men, the, the British guy. He plays Ulysses S. Grant. Um, you just have so many great actors coming together for such a worthwhile movie. You really do. Um, but like I said, it's, it's very politically attuned. Um, there's a lot of jargon going on in this movie. A lot of stuff that I, at times, did not understand. This isn't a movie where you can just go down and just, like, you know, just just watch it and enjoy it. You really have to pay attention to what's going on, or you're gonna miss stuff along the way. Um, it, you know, it, him trying to get the Democrats, Lincoln being a Republican himself, trying to get the Democrats to side with him, um, offering them jobs, because a lot of them had just lost their spot in, uh, Oh, I forgot what it was. They'd lost their seat in the house. But that wouldn't really make sense, though. I don't really know. See, I'm still kind of flustered by it. But the thing is that it's, it's a true story. Um, and, you you know, so you kind of know how it's going to end, which is part of the reason why I also don't really like going to see true story movies. Not that this is, you know, labeled based on a true story. Abraham Lincoln frees the slaves. Oh, no shit, really? But, uh, yeah, so, you know, that's, I don't know. You know what's going to happen is all I'm getting at. But, um... I, you really got to appreciate, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, you got to appreciate a director who understands the scope of his film. This movie, they tell you kind of in, in, in a text at the beginning, this is taking place during the fourth year of the Civil War. Uh, the president has just been reelected for a second term, and this is what's going on. This is not a movie that, um, you know, goes all over the place with his life, you know. I mean, obviously, thanks to good old uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, I know what Abraham was Link Lincoln was doing during his teenage years, so I really don't need to worry about that, obviously. But um, I guess at the end, I was interested to see if they were going to include, you know, John Wilkes Booth as a character of any sort, um, or if they were going to even bring up his assassination at all. And, uh, well, they, they did. They did, which I thought was strange. I just kind of thought it was a strange choice. I don't know how, how what the time uh, difference was in between um, the Civil War ending, the emancipation um, of the slaves, and his assassination, but they went, like, right from that right to that. And I just thought within the context of this film, it primarily dealing with... Um, him on a personal level and this the Thirteenth Amendment that it seemed out of place for them to to bring up that that moment in history. But you know, I guess I guess sure. I mean, if you guess touch on it, if you want to touch on it. So I don't know. That's that's really that all that I can say for this movie. It's gonna be kind of a short review, I think. All I can say is that it was very well done. Uh, I would give it a seven point five out of ten, and that's because I think that this movie, almost in the same way that Skyfall, the new 007 movie, wasn't exactly for me. This wasn't exactly for me because it's a Civil War era, and you need to know. It really pays to be something of a historian or someone that's really studied the Civil War to know the stuff that's going on here, because this is all backroom politics. Um, but you know, at the same time, to shine. Uh, Abraham Lincoln in a really great personal light as far as who he was as a husband and a father, which you got to really appreciate. Um, this is a film that just seems way overdue for one of the most iconic figures of our nation, and they did a great job with it. Daniel Day-Lewis, Steven Spielberg, everyone that, that played a major role in this just nailed it. So, um, you know, two and a half hours long, it's not, the, it's not too hard of a movie to sit through, but if you go into this thinking that it is the middle of the Civil War, or the end of the Civil War, really, and... Um, you're going to see some some bloody, gory action. You're really not. Um, there are a couple things here and there, but very, very little. So it's going to be, it's just, you know, very politically attuned kind of a film. That's really what it boils down to. So uh, go see it if you want. Uh, seven seven 7.5, I would give it. Definitely not bad. Uh, what's coming out next week? I don't even know what's coming out next week. I'm pretty sure there's something decent coming out next week. Let me check real quick. Uh, Peter Jackson denies the Hobbit animal cruelty charges. All right, good for him. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, Life of Pi is coming out next week. Um, that's at least what I'm going to go see. There's also Red Dawn, Rise of the Guardians, Hitchcock. But uh, Life of Pi looks really interesting. It looks like a, a visual spectacle of sorts. So that's what I'm going to be checking out next week. But uh, that's my review for Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Damn it. See what I've done. Uh, that's my review for Lincoln. Very good movie. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're into that kind of Civil War, very very much into politics of the time kind of thing, you'll love it. Um, it's still not bad any way you cut this movie. So there you go, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. This has been The Johnny Cage. Please subscribe, like, and comment if you have not. I'll talk to all of you awesome people tomorrow.